My name is Rob Cox. I am a graduate of Columbia University's Journalism School. Uh, so uh, I'm going to tell you a story about journalism and the media business and how great a decision that was to join the uh, newspaper business in 1990s. Um, but I'm also going to tell you, uh, hopefully, a story about um, that might inspire you uh, in one, on one way. What I've learned, and I'm going to tell you about my personal uh, story as well, um, it's really, it doesn't really matter what industry you've gone to. It really matters kind of what skills you have and how you can creatively apply those skills to what to things that you you just talked about, Bill, to disruption. Disruption is which this is supposed to be a TED talk, right? So let's use the word disruption because that's one of those buzzwords you hear a lot about on TED talks and in Silicon Valley. And my God, uh, let me tell you about disruption in the media industry. So in 1991, I went to Columbia Journalism School, and back then, um, you, there was no internet. I mean, the, the only place it existed, I think, was like Al Gore's office in Capitol Hill. Um, and you were given a choice then uh, to specialize in, um, and this is sort of quaint, I almost feel nostalgic for it, um, newspapers, broadcast, or magazines. That was, uh, they were very distinct silos, right? Um, and there was this one guy, uh, I can't remember his name, like maybe Professor Ross, is that a guy's name? I mean, if someone from J School might know, um, who did something called computer-assisted reporting. Isn't that nice? Computers. You came in with a floppy disk. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I chose newspapers. Really great idea, um, because that's where the greatest potential job opportunities clearly lay. Um, based on past performance, I wasn't totally um, stupid in thinking that. Uh, in 1992, which is the year I graduated, uh, advertising rev revenues in newspapers were $31 billion, according to the Newspaper Association of America, and they had nearly doubled from what, where they had been in 1982. So past performance, indicative of future performance. Um, anyway, they kept growing. They hit $49 billion in 2000. Uh, any, anyone can hazard a guess as to what happened after that? So last year... Uh, newspaper advertising revenues were $22 billion, so they more than halved. Um, that is a very big uh, form of disruption. Um, and by the way, that, that figure includes digital advertising, which is like 3 or $4 billion. Now, that's going to grow, sure. But, um, so if you think outsourcing automation and globalization suck, you have not actually been in the newspaper business or seen something, um, that, I guess what you would call being gutted by technological disruption. Um, Anyway, the, the, thing, the good news is I didn't get, didn't get completely killed by that. So in 2000, I actually went out and started an internet business. Woohoo! And uh, that business um, was uh, very focused. It was, uh, it was trying to basically work people like you, Bill, and people in the financial industry. We started it in London. It was a subscription business, which is really old school. Um, you know, we didn't um, have Twitter and all that kind of stuff back then. Um, but... All of us were able to t take these skills that we had and transfer them, bring them to bear in this new organization that we created. Um, and that, I guess that was sort of the, the lesson. Um, over the next eight years, we built this thing. It was called Breaking Views. Uh, it was um, it was fine. You know, we, we, we sold it um, to Thomson Reuters for about $30 million, which is sort of like funny ha-ha money in relative to all the money that's made in, Wall and in Silicon Valley. But, and we had a lot of mouths to feed, let me tell you. But, um, you know, lots of funding rounds. Um, but, but, it, but it was a relative success. And, and, and the, when I look back on it, I mean, so much of what the reason it worked was because we had really good people. We were able to create a whole that was worth more than the sum of the parts by basically finding, you know, using these people who were... Um, all very bright, even though very different people, um, and putting them to, into a group. Now, I look at that we sold the business, what, three years ago, four years ago. I look at, at the business now, and it is the, the media business or journalism, whatever you want to call it, and it's gone into sort of complete hyperspeed, so it, for, relative to what that, that trend I was telling you about, where basically um, it's an unstructured jungle of individuals um, battling for readers and remuneration. And there's actually a way to kind of measure that, and it's called, it's called Twitter. Twitter is this, like, newswire of humanity. Is anybody on it? Are you tweeting right now? Anybody? <laughs> Hashtag uh, Columbia is awesome. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the thing about Twitter is it allows anyone to build a following in an audience, and they can transport it anywhere they go. So this is kind of unprecedented. It's, it's more than just that decline, that, that complete halving of the industry I worked in, because... 
Um, that's been really bad, but it's given you this this incredible empowering uh, opportunity to people. So, um, and it's unprecedented. I mean, it's shaping the information you rely on, not just for your jobs and in finance, business, wherever it might be. It you know, it's in your the reviews of products that you buy, restaurants, movies, you name it, in ways that are kind of radical and and kind of hard to actually see where they or to comprehend, and know where they're going. And then this new world. Um, a journalist with a Pulitzer Prize may not be worth as much as one that has 30,000 Twitter followers that's, or a clout score of 85. Um, and that's, that's kind of, that's, this is disruption on a massive scale, but at the same time, it's incredibly empowering. And what matters really in, in the, 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 the journalist of, the few, of this age is going, what's going to matter is their ability. It has nothing to do with the platform they're at. And we're seeing that happening all over the place. Um, and that brings me to the second illustration of this lesson, that it's sort of what you bring. It's sort of what you take with you. It's your skill. And this is on a personal level. Now, bear with me. This gets a little bit difficult, this terrain. But um, so about a year ago, actually just um, 11 months and a couple of days ago, uh, you know, ago um, a 20-year-old in my town uh, walked into a middle, uh, sorry, an elementary school. He killed six teachers, and he killed... Uh, 20 children, all in, under, basically two seven-year-olds, and the rest were six years old. This is in Sandy Hook, uh, Connecticut. I grew up in, in, in Newtown, Connecticut, which is the same town as Sandy Hook. Um, and, uh, and I moved back there many years ago to raise my kids there. They're fine. They're older and, um, and, and we're, we're not in that school. But um, in the next couple of days after that, this was December 14th uh, of last year, a group of people, including myself, professionals, banded together, and we said, "We need to do something. This is this is completely, um, this can't ever happen in another town anywhere in this in this country, and um, and we certainly need to minister to the people in this town and, and to this town because no town has the resources, particularly a you know little ta- New England town in Connecticut." Um, so we got together, and I look, I, I sort of when I was thinking about this talk, I thought, "Wow, let's let's think about the transferability of skills." And the founders of this group, uh, including myself, were there was a marketing executive from Procter and Gamble. That place is like a cult, isn't it? I don't know if anybody work, but it, you know they have this like they speak a different language. They have these words that they use. But but this guy had these skills to. Um, he had the skills of a Procter and Gamble, you know, executive, which were he was like the ultimate. He's like Mister Chief of Staff, you know, a guy who pulls. He brought those skills to bear in this group. We, we created a thing called Sandy Hook Promise, which is the, the, the nonprofit um, charitable group that we founded, which was there to help them work with a lot of the families that lost children and loved ones. You know, he's now the executive director of the organization, and he is moving it to you know new, moving it forward in ways that n- he would never, on December thirteenth, have thought that his skills would be transferable to this incredible endeavor. Never would have thought that. Then I have uh, Tom Bittman, who's a who's a technology analyst at Gartner. This is a guy who, over the course of the last nine months, or 10 months, 11 months, has um, removed or had worked with Facebook and various other social media people to remove like 600 images, unlicensed images of the children from Sandy Hook um, on behalf of the families. Again, not something, a skill he never, he ever thought that he was going to have, but he, he was able to transfer it in, um, in a moment of incredible disruption uh, to, to, for, for something that's a, a pretty noble pursuit. I look at Scott Wolfman, guy who, who basically is a, um, what is Scott? I guess he's like a uh, booking agent for colleges and things like that. He's now managing uh, so much of the media inquiries and speaking engagements for some of these families. You've probably seen them all if you watch Good Morning America. They were there last week, two of them. You, if you look at uh, Oprah's show, you'll see the Wheeler family. They'll be on there. He's doing that. Again, no skill he would have ever thought that would have been applicable. Um, and anyway, I bring it all back down. Last week, I was I was helping. I took one of the moms. Her name is Nelva Marquez Green. Lost her little girl Anna, and Mark Barden, who lost his little son Daniel. And we went to do as part of the Sandy Hook Promise, sort of talking about the, the what we've accomplished in the year. Went to go see newspapers. And so you now here we so we go and we not, we go over to the Hartford Current to go see the the uh, the uh, editorial team there. And you you go in and and. Uh, I'm reminded of that disruption I told you about. So you go into this big uh, office building in the center of, of Hartford, Connecticut, and it's like a sea of empty desks. Um, and then, but then, you know, we went in, had this meeting, 
and I think we convinced that, you know, had a very productive meeting, a beautiful story was written. Went down to New Haven, Connecticut to go see the New Haven Register. Again, one of these um, things that in, when I was at Columbia in 1992, people said, yes, this will be a great place for your second job after you've gone to some unnamed place and written about the baseball. Um, and there we went in again. I mean, this wasn't even just empty desks. Like, they hadn't even clipped the lawn in, like, well, you know, since the summer. I mean, it, you sort of walked in, you thought, my God, this is sort of like Planet of the Apes. Someone left this building here. Oh, but look, there are some journalists there, and they're <laughs> as poorly dressed as I am. Um, but so it felt like at home. But, but well, anyway, I tell you all these stories, just the point being, and I don't know what you can take away from what I'm telling you. I have no idea what your, hopefully your business won't be anywhere near as disrupted as mine was. Um, um, but I would tell you, you know, you need to be prepared. You need to be prepared for disruption, both in your career and in your business, because certainly it's happening all over the place, whether it's globalization, automation, um, technology, um, and the third industrial revolution, I guess you could call it. Uh, and in your life, your life, you have to prepare for disruption. It, it just, uh, it's not something you, um, you know is going to happen. But you, one thing that is predictable is it will happen. So you know, take those skills you have and transfer them. Anyway, that's it.